Zaur versus Georgi left arm practice pull. Does that have an implication on the upcoming Devon versus Georgi match? Michael Todd versus Denis Siplenkov. This match needs to happen and Michael also wants it. Then the three arm wrestlers that Denis needs to avoid. Alexei Vovoda's reaction to John Brzezink's loss against Sasha Andreev at East vs West 10. Then East vs West 11 and King of the Table 9 announced matches. And finally, AMC 6 arm wrestling tournament updates. So let's start with the first one. After East vs West 10, Zaur Pezulayev was beating Georgi Svetkov up real good on the left arm in their practice pool. Now we don't know who was tired how much, but this shouldn't happen and it was surprising to me. Because although Georgi's arm is not at its best right now, but his left is really strong. It's still really good. And Zaur Pezulayev's left, self-admittedly, is about 15-20% weaker than his right. And still he's beating him up pretty good on the left. Now that's totally shocking because we have seen Georgi give Devon a good fight on the left and Zaur is beating him and we have seen Vitaly Lalatin flash pin Zaur on the left arm with no trouble at all. So how many levels are there to this thing? And if Georgi's left is seriously that weak that he's dominating Zaur on his stronger arm but is losing to him on the weaker arm then God knows how strong his right arm really is. And if the math adds up here, then Devon Lerit may be in trouble at King of the Table 9 and he may have to use a flop press on the right arm as well. He may still win, but his wrist might get taken. A couple of days ago, we talked about a potential match between Denis Siplenkov and Monster Michael Todd. Looks like Michael is also interested in having that rematch and he also wants to take his revenge just like Devon Lerit did. Michael posted this, Who wants to see this rematch in 2024? Well, almost everyone, if you don't hate Michael Todd, then this match totally makes sense. Michael is recovering from a bicep surgery, so he's not going to be 100%, well, most likely. And Denis Siplenkov is also away from his prime. So that match makes a lot of sense because whoever wins this match will get some winning momentum in his journey to the climb to the top. And you can mention in the comments who do you think is going to win in this rematch. And Michael recently practiced with Corey West once again. Michael top rolling Corey shows that his top roll against any cupping is really insane. He can top roll almost about anyone who is trying to hook him. But I think Michael should practice more with top rollers, elite level top rollers who can prevent Michael's own top roll with their pronation and not their cupping and then his game will improve even more. Then in the last video I talked about the opponents that Dennis should face. I also wrote down some names that he shouldn't face, but I don't know how I forgot to record that. So here are the names. Number one is Armas Gasparini. Yes, I did say before the match that irrespective of who wins or loses, Denis Siplenkov can face Armas in his next match. But after watching that match, I changed my opinion. Because Armas is going to take Denis Siplenkov's wrist. His wrist has shown that much weakness that it can be taken by Armas. And Armas Gasparini is a very simple arm wrestler. If he has pronation and cupping, you cannot beat him. He's going to take your arm to the pad for sure and that is going to be a stylistic nightmare once again for Denis Siplenkov. And I don't want to see two losses in Denis Siplenkov's comeback journey. That will be really demotivating for the legendary arm wrestler. Then I had Levan Saginashvili written as the second name which is not going to happen anyways for obvious reasons. And the third name is Vitaly Lalatin. He can also cause some stylistic trouble to Dennis, so it's better Dennis stay away from him for some time at least as of now. Ryan Bowen posted this photo on his Facebook and Instagram. My next match is confirmed, knuckles up January 6th New York against Korea's number one arm wrestler Bak Seong Yul, can't wait. So after defeating India's number one, now Ryan is going to another country. Will he be successful again? We'll see. Then Vovoda reacted to John Brzezink's loss against Sasho. I don't understand why John is pushing weight to compete for the title when he's comfortable being 100 to 102 kilos. Well, if I give some politically correct answer, then I'll say that Vovoda was saying that John is a legend. He believes that. He's a friend of him. John should have fun. He should not risk his health. And people should ask for John Brzezink matches. And John shouldn't do these weight cutting for title matches and he shouldn't try to reach out to someone or try to beat someone. That's the correct answer that Vovoda gave but if I 
apply my conspiracy theory mind in this subject then i'll have to say three things about that number one since vovoda lost to john his motivation went down just like it went down against the tim brezen match after the tim brezen match and he's not been posting any video since then i will not be shocked if he didn't arm wrestle even once since that lost against john and number two anyone that john loses to from now on makes vovoda look weaker and number 3 vovoda was saying that even i lose 20 to 30% strength when i lose like 8 to 10 kilos or even less than that maybe he is saying that too because it looks like john was way weaker against sasho than what he was when he faced vovoda please forgive my conspiracy theory mind but i usually think like that not usually but sometimes i think like that next up we have east versus west 11 matches Evgeny Prunik versus Alijan Boratov 105 kg title match that was already announced by Engin quite some time ago and we have already discussed that now we have the winner Irakli Zerekashvili who will be facing Paul Lin I'm quite sad because I'm Paul Lin's one of the biggest fans and I think he had some chance against Rostam Babayev in that rematch but against Irakli I think Paul's chances are precisely about 0 to 1% because he simply cannot stop that top roll he cannot out top roll irakli and there is absolutely no way that he's going to hook irakli so i feel bad for my my friend my buddy paul then oleg jok versus the 85 kg waf champion avantadil todbridze we'll talk about that some day later matt mask versus wagner botlato right arm matt should be the favorite but wagner was aware of this match for months now and still there is some time left so he better prepare he better win that match or at least give us a good fight otherwise matt is going to run him over king of the table matches georgi swetkov versus devon laird right arm vitali lalitin versus ermes gasprini two main events larry wills versus leonardes arcona larry will finally get that revenge lars rorbakan versus valera sergey kalinishenko versus rf artem these are the matches please purchase the pay per view and finally we have amc 6 the biggest arm wrestling tournament in the world december 23rd in moscow veins will be conducted on 22nd of december the entrance fees is about 220 dollars there are many weight categories there 65 75 85 95 105 and 105 plus this time there is only one absolute weight category unlike the previous times where there were two categories well there were two categories only once otherwise there there have always been only one so first place gets 6000 second 3000 then 1500 then 1000 and in the absolute category 15000 7500 3500 1500 96500 $96, to be given away that's simply insane i just hope that denis siplenkov competes there i know there are exactly 0% chances of that happening but still i would have loved to see that and it would really really highly benefit denis siplenkov thanks for watching like the video and subscribe